Welcome to our World News Program, where today we're diving into some intriguing developments from around the globe. First off, we're heading to China, where the long-awaited third plenum is set to outline the country's economic trajectory for the next decade. It's a pivotal moment that could see China steering towards a high-tech, green future, but not without its challenges, including trade tensions and the quest to avoid the middle-income trap. Next, we're zooming into India, where the IPO market has been sizzling hot. While Indian founders have been cashing in big time amid a stock market rally, not all is rosy for the investors. A significant slice of the IPOs launched during the bull run of 2021 have seen their share prices tumble below their debut numbers, leaving investors nursing their wounds. It's a classic tale of boom and bust, with a side of regulatory concern over potential market manipulation. Lastly, we're taking a step back in time to marvel at how ancient Amazonians turned a toxic crop into a dietary cornerstone. The story of cassava, a plant that's both deadly and nourishing, showcases human ingenuity and adaptability. Through a meticulous process of detoxification, indigenous peoples have made cassava a resilient and versatile staple, highlighting a remarkable agricultural feat so, stick around for the detailed scoop on these stories. Please continue to watch for more in-depth coverage. In the dynamic world of global economics and traditional wisdom, two stories from opposite sides of the planet capture the essence of innovation and adaptation. The South China Morning Post, SCMP, and Nikkei Asia bring to light the strategic moves in China and India, respectively, showcasing how these countries are shaping their futures amidst challenges. Meanwhile, the Washington Post delves into the past to reveal how ancient Amazonians turned a toxic crop into a dietary cornerstone, illustrating the timeless human capacity for ingenuity. The South China Morning Post's insightful piece on China's third plenum, scheduled for July, heralds a pivotal moment for the country's economic trajectory. This significant meeting, deemed the most crucial of the seven plenums within a central committee's five-year cycle, is set to outline China's economic strategy for the next five to ten years. Amidst the backdrop of trade frictions with the US and EU, China's leadership is poised to steer the nation towards sectors promising higher quality growth, such as science and technology, the digital economy, artificial intelligence, and green investment. This strategic pivot is not just about economic reform, it's a calculated move to vault China over the middle-income trap and secure its status as a developed economy. The anticipation surrounding the plenum underscores the Chinese government's resolve to tackle both domestic and external challenges head-on, striving for a strategic advantage in the global arena. On another front, Nikkei Asia sheds light on the Indian market, where the recent IPO frenzy has been a double-edged sword. In 2021, the Indian stock market witnessed a bull run, encouraging a surge in initial public offerings, IPOs. Entrepreneurs cashed in, selling shares worth $9.8 billion between 2021 and 2023, a staggering 2.4 times more than in the previous three years. However, this golden period for founders has not been as prosperous for investors. A notable portion of these newly listed companies saw their share prices dip below their initial offer price, sparking concerns over potential overvaluation. Despite the market's exuberance and a tripling in the number of trading accounts, the aftermath has been a mix of fortunes. While the IPO boom has been fueled by increased retail investment and a buoyant stock market, it has also prompted regulatory scrutiny, especially among SMEs with questionable business models. This scenario paints a complex picture of India's financial landscape where the rush for IPOs has yielded both success stories and cautionary tales. From the bustling stock markets of India and the strategic corridors of power in China, we travel back in time with the Washington Post to the ancient Amazon, where a remarkable story of human ingenuity unfolds. Cassava, a crop now fundamental to diets in the southern hemisphere, was once a deadly plant. Indigenous Amazonians, over millennia, transformed cassava from a toxic threat into a dietary staple through an elaborate detoxification process. This involved grinding, rinsing, and cooking the plant to eliminate its cyanide-producing chemicals. The adaptation of cassava, with its over 70 varieties, showcases the ancient wisdom of the indigenous people and their intimate understanding of their environment. Cassava's resilience, ease of cultivation, and natural pest resistance highlight its potential as a future global crop, especially in an era where sustainability and food security are paramount. These narratives from SCMP, Nikkei Asia, and the Washington Post weave together the threads of strategic economic planning, market dynamics, and ancient wisdom. They illustrate the multifaceted approaches nations and peoples take to navigate challenges, seize opportunities, and ensure survival. From the boardrooms of China and India to the ancient fields of the Amazon, the stories of adaptation and foresight continue to inspire and instruct, reminding us of the enduring human capacity to innovate and overcome.
In an exclusive chat with People, Gede Watanabe, the actor behind the iconic character Long Duck Dong from the 1984 hit movie Sixteen Candles, opened up about his role that has since been criticized for perpetuating Asian stereotypes. At the time, Watanabe, now 68, didn't perceive his character as offensive. He was more focused on the fact that this role was a significant financial opportunity compared to his theater work. It was a good job, and it paid well, he remarked, reflecting on the lack of roles available for Asian actors back then. I didn't see it as stereotypical or racist, which seems odd now, he admitted. However, Watanabe acknowledged that there were moments, even back then, that raised red flags for him, such as the use of the term Chinaman in the film. He pointed out that awareness and sensitivity around racial stereotypes were much less evolved at that time. People still had to be educated about what was offensive, he explained, shedding light on the complexities of navigating Hollywood as an Asian actor in the 1980s. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.